Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just curious about something real quick. How many more times are we going to have to do stories about mom's boyfriend and the things that are happening in a negative capacity? I'm not sure, but this is another story in a row. And I keep hoping that this thing will quell down some because we've been talking about it for so long. We've given people plenty of warnings that dating with young children is a very dangerous thing to do. But in this case, I got to tell you guys, even though mom's boyfriend did something very heinous, I think the mom should be held just as responsible for putting her child in this dangerous situation. So let me preface. I'm going to say some things that are not going to sit well with your sensibilities. And the story is going to have some details that are going to rock you to the core. Really, really disturbing details. That is your official disclaimer to exit if you can't handle that. Because what happened to this little boy is unspeakable. It's horrific and it's barbaric. So please make sure you guys strap your boxers and panties on real tight with this story. All right. A Clinton man will be incarcerated for the rest of his natural life after he pled guilty Thursday afternoon to charges stemming from an incident that left a two year old boy. That beautiful baby boy right there left him dead. And this is according to the 8th Circuit Solicitor David M. Stumbo. And that was where the announcement came from. So this comes from the website scsolicitor8.org. That's where we're getting our info from. The man in question, if you can even call him a man, I'm not sure if this is a man or if this is just one of Satan's spawns, a little demon in real life. William Ryan Looper, who was 30 years old. 30 years old. He looks very slow. It looked like you asked him if you, if you said, what's one plus one, William Looper? He'd be like, huh? Huh? What's one plus one, boy? Huh? That's what he looked like to me. That boy looked like if you put him in a race next to a turtle, he might lose the race, right? If he were a bottle of molasses in, in, the, in the snow, you turn it and pour it upside down, it come out really, really, really slow. Him and the mom look slower than global warming. I'm sorry, but they look slow as hell. You're not going to feel bad when y'all heard the details. Are y'all ready for this? He pled guilty Thursday afternoon to one count of murder, one count of first degree criminal sexual assault with a minor, and two counts of unlawful neglect of a child in connection with the June of 2018 death of two-year-old Brantley Smith. The child of Looper's then girlfriend, Jessica Smith, mom's boyfriend. Y'all look at this boy's face. I need to get a bigger picture of him because I want you guys to really take a look at him. I'm just really lost with this. I'm going to blow this up on the screen because I want somebody who's listened to the sound of my voice to look at that picture and tell me just from the picture alone. I think pictures tell a thousand words. What could this boy have done to deserve being murdered and sexually assaulted by mom's boyfriend while mom didn't do a, didn't do a cotton picking thing about it. Just let it happen and maybe even participated in it. Why would you do that to him? What, what did he do to deserve a life like that or a death like that? That kid seems like an awesome, sweet baby boy. I don't get it. I don't get it. I would never understand it. I don't want to understand it. It's just the type of crime that needs to just be punished in the harshest way. And I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm going to be real honest with you. 
we are just coming off of saving my friend. I, I guess I can call him a friend. We didn't, we didn't know each other personally. Julius Jones, in that story, we just found out today that the governor did end up giving and granting him clemency, which is awesome. That's something that we fought, that Oklahoma has fought for for 22 years. That's something that I have advocated for for at least the past two years. To not put that man on death row because he didn't commit the crime that they put him on death row for. Now, that caveat is a huge difference between somebody who we know committed the crime. Huge difference. Someone who was clear and presently in this situation that caused this boy's death. So here's where I'm conflicted. I feel like if we're going to say that the death penalty is a bad thing, then I think it needs to be a bad thing for any of us to try to take the law into our own hands, even though it might be in the constitution or the rules. I just don't like the fact that we're playing God by executing people. Are you ready for the next caveat? I think there should be a difference between adults doing something to adults and adults murdering, abusing, and raping children. That is an entirely different level. That's a different level of criminal behavior. There, I don't think there is anything lower than hurting, murdering, abusing, and raping children. That's the type of thing that I think people need to be stood up in front of a firing squad for. That's why I'm conflicted. I had to talk with one of my friends, whether she understood what I was saying or not, probably not. But in my humble opinion, there has to be a conflict here because one, it can be overall wrong. And two, you have to start setting a much harsher standard for our babies, period. The two can exist. That's why I'm conflicted. I think when you hurt, thank you in the chat, you said it. I think when you F with our children, when you mess with our babies, all bets should be off, period. In September of 2018, Solicitor Stumbo provided formal notice to Looper that the state intended to seek the death penalty. The state agreed to withdraw the death penalty notice in exchange for his guilty plea and cooperation with prosecutors and law enforcement to testify as to the crimes in which he was victimized. Circuit Judge Donald Hawker sentenced Looper to the negotiated life in prison without the possibility of parole on the murder charge. 60 years of first degree criminal sexual assault or sexual conduct charge and 10 years each, each count of the unlawful neglect charges with all sentences to run concurrently at the same time, not consecutive, not back to back concurrent, because if you get a life sentence, it's not gonna really matter. In June of 2018, authorities were called to the Smith's residence in response to a possible child death. When they got there, officers found two-year-old Brantley Smith, the baby boy, and that's the biological father. We'll talk about him in a minute because I got a lot to say. Let's go back. About the biological father. But we'll get there. They arrived and found two-year-old Brentley Smith to be unresponsive and to have visible bruising across much of most of his body. The biological mother, Jessica Smith, and we're going to talk about her too, because her case is still ongoing. Her boyfriend got convicted first. Biological mom's case is still ongoing. How many of you guys think that the mom 
should get equal treatment. She should get the equal charges to the boyfriend. Don't let mom off the hook with a little slap on the wrist five to ten years. I don't like that. Because I think that's what she's facing. I think the mom is facing ten years. Possibly a short enough amount of time that she might be able to get out of prison and produce another baby and do this all over again. She's not going to learn a lesson like that until she gets the equal time that he get in prison. The mom told officers that Looper had beaten the child and the child was pronounced dead at the scene. Looper later admitted under interrog uh, interrogation to Lawrence County and SC law enforcement divisions investigators. That's a long term that he had been horrifically beating and abusing the child repeatedly for approximately two weeks and that he did not know why. Looper also confessed to sexually assaulting the child with a sex toy. Mom's boyfriend admitted to sexually assaulting this baby with a sex toy. with the intention of further hurting that boy. Why? Stumbo handled the case, handled the case for the state with the assistance from senior assistant solicitor, Ta uh, Taylor Daniel, assistant solicitors, Margaret Boykin and Dale Scott, Eighth Circuit investigators Walter Bentley and Michael Cox and victim advocate Rita Smith. Looper was represented by Eighth Circuit uh, public defender Chelsea McNeil and C. Boyd Young. So it sounds like these public defenders did their job and got him to spare himself from the death penalty. So it sounds like they did their job. Chief attorney for the Capital Trial Division of the South Carolina Commission on indigent and on indigent defense. Solicitor Stumbo praised the work for his staff along with the work of the of Sheriff Don Reynolds and the Lawrence County Sheriff's Office as well as SLED in securing the conviction and prison sentence. Billy Looper's actions are the very face of evil and it's unfathomable the depth of that evil by Brantley on that horrific night. Although we still believe that he is deserving of a death sentence for what he did, this resolution to, to a negotiated life sentence will, prove, will provide a unique opportunity to pursue a, a more complete justice for his family and our community. May Brantley rest in peace. I echo that sentiment. Let me give you guys the fair usage. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. If you guys would do me a favor and help share these stories, and all you got to do to do that is just click the thumbs up so more people can see this story and hear what this baby had to go through because everybody needs to hear about this, okay? And also, just to let you guys know, I think that the charges that the mom was looking at, if I'm not mistaken, let me see. The mom was charged with homicide by child abuse and two counts of unlawful cut conduct towards a child. I'm not sure how much time she's looking at, but I say, give her 50 years. Easy. This county two-year-old is dead tonight, and the child's mother and her boyfriend are behind bars in connection with this new investigation. Deputies say William Looper faces several charges, including murder, and Jessica Smith faces charges of homicide by child abuse. The 7 News reporter Stephanie Borman was at a press conference where the sheriff revealed these gruesome details. Deputies showed up at this home early Saturday morning for a call about an unresponsive child. But they were unaware they would be walking into what the sheriff is calling one of the most horrendous cases his deputies have ever encountered. As my leading investigators has already stated, 
it's, it's, it's the worst he'd ever seen. Lawrence County investigators and the solicitor's office are piecing together their case against Jessica Blake Smith and her boyfriend, William Ryan Looper, for the murder of Smith's two-year-old son. The toddler lived at this home on Country Lane in Clinton, South Carolina, with Smith, Looper, and two other young children ages six and seven. Police tell 7 News during the course of their investigation, it was determined the child was sexually molested and brutally beaten before his death. In cases like this, I mean, what possible jail time could these two people be facing? Well, I, I hope a whole, I hope forever. How about that? Due to the nature of this case, the sheriff's office is putting together counseling and other resources for all the investigators involved. Reporting in Lawrence County, Stephanie Borman, 7 News. Sheriff Reynolds tells 7 News this is not Looper's first run-in with the law. He's been behind bars before for burglary, larceny, breaking and entering, and fraud. So what is the news trying to tell me about mom's boyfriend? Oh... He had a criminal history. He's a thug. So this is why I think mom needs life in prison as well. Listen at this man's criminal history. A simple background check would have told you this. Mom cannot be taken off the table when it comes to her accountability and her culpability in this situation. Listen at boyfriend. Listen at his record again. Listen at this. This is who mom had her boyfriend, her, her child around. With the law, he's been behind bars before for burglary, larceny, breaking and entering, and fraud. With the law, he's been behind bars before for burglary, larceny, breaking and entering, and fraud. The investigators involved. Reporting in Lawrence County, Stephanie Borman, 7 News. Sheriff Reynolds tells 7 News this is not Looper's first run-in with the law. He's been behind bars before for burglary, larceny, breaking and entering, and fraud. Watching on Ben Hoover, an upstate family is turning pain into power. A new foundation in honor of Brantley Smith, a two-year-old boy who was molested and murdered in Lawrence, will raise awareness about child abuse in hopes of preventing another tragedy. 7 News reporter Stephanie Borman has the story all new at 10. Let me answer this because I was curious about that. That's actually a great question. And you asked, did they say anything about CPS being involved? Let me double check. I don't think they did because I looked at multiple articles. Let me make sure. <clears throat> Let me see. I don't think there was any welfare checks done. If I'm wrong about that, y'all can let me know if you find an article that says otherwise. But as of right now, I don't see, and I had two different sources up right here. I didn't see them say anything about welfare checks or CPS. So I didn't see that come up, but that's a excellent question. My grandson went through a tremendous death that no person should ever have to go through. Bobby Fowler's grandson, Brantley Smith, was only two when he was murdered. Fowler's daughter, the little boy's mother, is charged in her child's death. Jessica Smith's boyfriend, William Looper, also in jail, charged with beating, molesting, and murdering the child. Where do we stand with the investigation? Are you allowed to talk about it? No, ma'am, it's ongoing, and we've been asked to keep that part Quiet. It's a nightmare his grandparents live with every day, and they've yet to wrap their minds around it. All we can say is we're changed. Yeah. Like, forever. Forever. But this family will try to turn their pain into power, hoping to reach others suffering in silence just like their grandson through a community fundraiser at the Lawrence County Recreational Park in August. We're hoping to spread the word that there is help out there. So we're going to start a foundation that if you come forward as a wife or mother and need help, or if a kid comes forward, we're going to give you a safe place to go. Through funds collected from the event, filled with food vendors, live music, local child advocacy groups, and police, the Fowlers will start Brantley's Hope Foundation. Their message to others, there is hope after abuse. His hope, I know, is my grandson, who is very precious, would be that nobody should ever go through what he went through y'all can tell that man is pissed and this is why i love it when i hear from our men i like this
I like this a lot. But that man is extremely pissed. And let me tell you guys this. I want y'all to notice how the first thing that they didn't talk about was a GoFundMe to pay for the funeral. What they're talking about is starting a foundation completely, completely different than a GoFundMe that just puts money in the pocket of people. When you put up a foundation, that means you're building for the future for those who are alive. And I think that is awesome. And that is an awesome way to pay homage to your grandson. But I, I totally love that and totally respect that. In Lawrence County, Stephanie Borman, 7 News. Last video. Thousands of community members in Lawrence County gathered to pray and remember the life of Brantley Smith. Investigators say the little boy was molested, brutally beaten, and murdered. Tonight, the two-year-old's mother, Jessica Smith, and her boyfriend, William Looper, will stay in jail charged in the toddler's death. We start tonight with Stephanie Borman. She spoke to the boy's father at an emotional gathering tonight. I want y'all to hear from the biological father because some of y'all asked, where's the biological father? Here he is. Listen to what he got to say, and I want y'all to tell me what you think. God for the family as they seek answers to questions that they may not ever find the answer to, Lord. I pray that you would show them your love. People from all walks of life, some who knew two-year-old... Notice how there were no balloons. Good job. Brantley Smith, others who were moved... Foundations, not GoFundMe. I love that. Can y'all remember that hashtag? My memory is not that good. Thank you, Karen. Foundations, not GoFundMe. I love that. Let's remember that. Foundations, not GoFundMe's. For people who have, de who have died. Unless you're starting a GoFundMe for a foundation. That makes more sense. Do it for the living, not for the dead. By his death, gathered at the Lawrence County Sheriff's Office for a vigil organized by an upstate anti-violence group. Listen, it is hard for me to talk about this because I think about the pain he went through, the suffering, and not understanding why he suffered. The boy was found unresponsive Saturday at this home on Country Lane in Clinton. Investigators say he was molested, beaten, and murdered. Lord, remembering this young life, God knowing that there was a deal of pain and suffering that he went through. Among the crowd, the boy's father, Justin Smith, says he saw his son two months ago, not knowing it would be his last time. Have you processed anything that's happened? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I really haven't talked to anyone. Smith says the community's support is encouraging. He said he had seen his son for two months. Anything that's happened? Uh, no, not really. Uh... And two months ago, not knowing it would be his last time. Friend that he went to. Among the crowd, the boy's father, Justin Smith, says he saw his son two months ago, not knowing it would be his last time. Have you processed anything that's happened? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I really haven't talked to anyone. Smith says the community's support is encouraging. All these people praying and lighting candles for Brantley. Some even brought toys for Brantley's two older brothers who have been placed in the state's custody. According to Smith, Brantley's mother, Jessica, had primary custody of their three children. She's now in jail, charged with homicide by child abuse. Her boyfriend, William Ryan Looper, also in jail, charged with murder. I tried to tell her that he was a bad guy. Nobody took my word for it. Smith is now trying to get custody. And that comes with a high price. Dating thugs. Because you think he's cute. You liked him, Mom. Maybe you should have gave up custody of your son to the dad and go have fun with your murderous, nasty, pedophile thug boyfriend because that's what he is. Hashtag pedo. Prepubescent. Prepubescent is pedo. That's what he is. And the dad tried to warn the mom and the more and the mom was just like, no, I, I was going to like me a thug. I was going to like me a thug. You should have gave up custody of your kid if that's who you wanted to date. With murder. I tried to tell her that he was a bad guy. Nobody took my word for it. Smith is now trying to get custody of his six and seven year old, but says it hurts to think he could have done more to protect his son. It would have never happened if, I, if they would have been in my care. It would have never happen. In Lawrence County. And it makes you wonder if this boyfriend did this to, why would he do this to one kid Y'all think he did it to the other kids? I think he did. I wonder if the other kids have spoken up. 
or did this only happen to one kid? It's just this this whole thing is is wrong and messed up. Stephanie Borman, 7 News. Bond was denied for both Looper and Jessica Smith. A judge will decide if the other children will stay with the state or live with a family member. At this point, you might as well get a kiss to the dad unless for some reason he's unstable, which we don't know. We don't know that. But why wouldn't they automatically get a biological father a chance is beyond me. But I think that he should have to prove himself to be a stable father. Put him through a background check and give him a chance. But again, you know, this is a special level of stupid. You can't be this level of dumb, nasty, and disgusting. This is just flat out negligence on the mom's part. And I think that if you start to hold these bad mothers accountable, because it's not all, but if you start to hold these bad mothers who are flat out negligent and start giving them equal sentences to their thug lions, then you will see a change in their behavior. The behavior is what we want to change, which is supposed to be the reason of either A, the death penalty, B, life in prison, prison terms. It's supposed to make an example out of these people that other people realize, if, if, at least if for nothing else, if their moral compass, their spiritual spirituality ain't, ain't compass ain't functioning on the inside, at least you know there's a physical consequence that we can lock your ass up. And maybe I don't want to go that route. So maybe I better not abuse these kids or leave them in messed up positions. If you ask me, I think they both deserve equal time. That's the only way that you're going to make an example. If you take your kids to the thug zoo, then you should face the consequences as well as the thug lion. Baby Brantley, young soul, young prince, RIP. Boy, this world really, really did him an injustice. He did, he did not deserve that. But thank y'all for listening with an open mind as well as an open heart. And make sure you guys share his story, okay? Thank you guys so much.